Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we'll end our discussion on xylem and we'll start our discussion on the next vascular bundle that is uh, phloem. Now phloem, the word phloem is derived from a Greek word which means bark, the bark of the tree. What is phloem again? Again, these are the conducting tissues, but what is it conducting here? Because water and nutrients is anyways conducted by xylem. So what is left out? The left out thing is food. The food which is prepared during photosynthesis, that also needs to be conducted to different parts of the plant. And that is done by phloem. So it transports food materials from leaves to other plant parts. So here you can note a very important difference between xylem and phloem. Xylem conducts only in the upward direction that is from roots to the stems or the leaves which are located above the root. But in case of phloem it is not like that. It conducts both downwards as well as upwards because from leaves it has to conduct to the roots also so that will be downward. From leaves it also needs to conduct to the upper stems which is upward. So, it is in multi directions. So, the transportation or the conduction has to happen in all directions basically. So, phloem are mostly made up of living cells except phloem fibers. Like in case of xylem, there were four elements which we talked about and all the three were dead except for xylem parenchyma which was living. But it is not like that in case of phloem. Here, all the elements are living except phloem fibers which is dead. So let us see what are the elements phloem is made up of. It is made up of sieve tubes which look somewhat like this. A tubular structure of course. Companion cells. Okay. Phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. So there we had uh, vessels and trachets. Here we have sieve tubes and companion cells. So again here also we will talk about each of the elements one by one. But in this picture, this picture shows the entire phloem. So all the elements are shown in one complete picture. So if you look at the sieve tube, it is nothing but a tube like structure. Companion cells are cellular structures which are accompanying the sieve tube. So basically it is just adjacent to the sieve tube. Phloem parenchyma are the normal parenchyma cells with cytoplasm and nucleus and phloem fibers. Phloem fibers are the dead cells which are basically for support. So let us talk about each of these elements. So we'll start with sieve tube. Sieve, what does the word sieve means? We generally use it, it, it is a, um, an object with small perforations in it. We often use it for filtering stuffs, right? It, we often use it in our kitchen and all. So see why are they called sieve tubes? So they are tube like structures that is why they are called tubes. Now why do they have the term sieve attached to it? Because maybe even they have small pores like structure. Okay let us see what they are. So these are tubular cells with perforated walls as I said. The name itself explains it. Tubes so tubular. Sieve, that is wide, small holes or small pores or perforations. So their walls have small perforations and those perforations actually act as interconnection between the different cells. So they actually help in communication between the cells. Sieve tube elements. Now again, the sieve tube is made up of different structures called sieve tube elements. Now each of these sieve tube elements has a large vacuole. Now a large vacuole has to be there, right? That is quite logical because uh, phloem is basically transporting food material. So it has to store food in some form, in the form of starch or something. So therefore, who will store that inside the cell? A vacuole, of course. So the vacuole is quite large. There is no nucleus because there is, nucleus is uh, mostly used for cell division and all those stuff. So there is nothing like that required here. So nucleus is not need, really needed. Peripheral cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is there towards the periphery. So that's about the sieve tube. Now 
same tubes are also attached to the companion cells. So if you look at this picture, you can see that companion cells are atta exactly attached to the sieve tubes. Now end walls are perforated for these sieve tubes. If you look at their end walls, they are perforated. Small perforations can be seen. And this perforated end wall forms a sieve plate. This is known as a sieve plate. Correct? Okay. Now let us see what are these companion cells. What is companion? Companion means somebody who accompanies you or somebody, uh, you can say a friend. So why are they called companion cells? Because they are basically accompanying the sieve tubes. So they help the sieve tubes in their function. Correct? So let us see. What do they do? These are specialized parenchyma cells. Again, companion cells are also parenchyma cells, but they are specialized to perform a specific function. As when we, when we were discussing about parenchyma, I mentioned, right, that they are the basic packing tissue, which are unspecialized. Unspecialized in the sense they can perform a variety of functions. So here, a set of parenchyma cells are specialized and that is why they are given a different name called companion cells. So what do they do? They basically regulate the metabolic activities of the sieve tube elements and that is why they are called companion cells because they help in all the activities of the sieve tube elements because these are all living cells we are talking about. So metabolism will take place inside these cells. So handling that metabolic activity. So that regulation means uh, maintaining the exact balance of the metabolic activities that is basically done by the companion cells so they maintain the exact pressure gradient in the sieve tubes because see for all the metabolic activities to take place uh, the environment should be appropriate right so the exact pressure exact temperature has to be there so these companion cells basically maintain that pressure gradient which is needed for the metabolism in sieve tubes now, companion cells have connections to sieve cells as well as other cells. I mean, these companion cells, if you see, they are connected to the sieve cells, sieve tube cells. They are also connected to other cells, right? So, these are basically the companion cells. Now, one important thing to note here is that there are some plants, some plants in the sense, the non-flowering plants, that is gymnosperms. In gymnosperms, we do not have companion cells. Instead of companion cells, we have albuminous cells. Now, you might say, when they also have a substitute, I mean, why do they have a different name? That's because there is a major difference. Companion cells are connected to sieve cells as well as other cells. But albuminous cells are connected only to the sieve cells. So these cells are connected only to sieve cells, whereas companion cells are connected to sieve cells plus other cells. So that is the difference between companion cells and albuminous cells. So companion cells are present in angiosperms and albuminous cells are present in gymnosperms. Okay, so we covered two elements, sieve tubes and companion cells. Let us look at the third one that is flowing parenchyma. So parenchyma again, they are here, the when you talk about the shape, they are elongated cylindrical cells. They support sieve tubes and also stores compounds like starch because food storage is again a primary function of parenchyma. And last one is flowing fibers, which are sclerenchymatous dead cells. So these are dead cells and they are sclerenchyma cells. You remember sclerenchyma, right? Who are very, the walls are lignified and they are very tough and hard cells. They have extremely thick cell walls and they give mechanical strength. So support and strength is the only purpose that flowing fibers serve. So when we talk about the conduction of food, that main function of flowing, that is conduction of food, is performed by the sieve tubes. The companion cells and the flowing parenchyma, they basically support the sieve tubes. 
So the main function performed by sieve tube, flow in parenchyma and uh, companion cells, they support the sieve tube to perform its function and flow in fibers give some support, mechanical strength. As I said, th that support is always needed. Now these phloem fibers, they are dead cells, that is they become dead at maturity. Why do they become dead? Because they lose protoplasm. So once there is no protoplasm, there are no cell organelles, there is no cell activity taking place. So they are dead. Now some of the examples of phloem fibers are jute, hemp, flax, which are used commercially. They are some of the examples of phloem fibers. I would write it here, some examples jute, hemp, flax, they are all examples of phloem fibers. Again, another point to note here is phloem parenchyma is absent in monocots. Now, when you talk about monocotyledonous plants, I'm sure you all remember what is a monocot and what is a dicot. Monocot is the one which is only one cotyledon. Cotyledon is nothing but the seed leaf. And dicot is one which has two cotyledons or two seed leaves. I, we have spoken about all these things in uh, diversity chapter. So you can recap that if you want to know more about monocots and dicots. So this is about the elements of phloem. Now the way we discussed about protoxylem. Now the way we talked about protoxylem and metaxylem, in a similar way we will now talk about protofloem and metafloem. So protofloem again is the first formed primary phloem. So there in xylem they had a narrow lumen. Now here they will have a narrow sieve tube. So because the sieve tube is the most important organ when we talk about phloem. So the sieve tubes are going to be narrower. So it is like similar to what we spoke about in case of xylem. The next is metafloem. It is obviously the later formed primary phloem and they have got bigger sieve tubes or wider sieve tubes. So that is your protofloem and metafloem. So with this we end our discussion. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.